Hello. I can't ask anyone else to share their stories about being dyslexic if I don't share my own. So this is my story. This is my journey to the point that I am right now. So I'm severely dyslexic, but I never found that out until quite late on in my education. For a long time, I was, I knew myself as a splud for spelling. And that was it. I was just bad at spelling. I had a specific learning difficulty for spelling, which was wonderful because it explained why I couldn't spell, but it never explained everything else. It never explained why I felt alone or why I couldn't do things everybody else could in my class. And I remember the how I began to feel alone and quite isolated was back when I was five and six, when everybody else on my table could do the work that I couldn't do far quicker than me, being able to do their handwriting, being able to do their literacy and their spellings, and then going off and playing, and I would be the last one sat in the class, still struggling away, still getting very frustrated and not being able to do things that everybody else took for granted and could do relatively quickly. And then... Over the years in primary school, having to do the spelling tests, and every Friday morning, it was spelling tests. And you would be given 10 spellings in which to learn over the week, and then come that Friday morning, you would sit down and you would do them. And the teacher at that point in time, if you got your 10 spellings, you could end up getting particular sweets, and you would be able to pick them yourself. And looking back, I've nicknamed it the, the pity suite. And for me, even though I would spend hours upon hours practicing my spellings, I would only get the odd two or three on a good day four, on a very bad day one, or maybe zero. And being given this suite for, well, you tried, which was lovely. And I understand the sentiment, but it didn't help either. It was a lovely gesture for the teacher, but at the same time, it just compounded the issue of, well, what about all those hours of extra work? What did I, what, why did I spend all that time only to get two or three? And as the years progressed, it was not being able to explain myself, not being able to, to put forward articulately what I was meaning and at times only my mum could understand what I was saying because the sentences would be jumbled or they would be oddly put together and mums being mums can kind of understand their kids at the best of times but at times it was just a jumble of words and when my mum would send me down to the shops to get groceries and say if she said for me to get flour I would come back for, with a, bou a bouquet of flowers, not the flour that she needed for baking. And that, the splud for spelling never explained that. It never explained why I couldn't do the things that everybody else could do. And now my brother's very sporty, so we ended up getting a swing ball set. But the splud for spelling never explained why I couldn't hit the ball as it swung around, why that I couldn't catch or do anything like that. But I knew that I was different. And I knew that everybody else around me could do the things that I couldn't do. It just never explained why. And then when I can when I got to secondary school, I was lucky enough to be in the top sets. But again, I felt that I had to prove my worth, prove why I was in the top sets, because when it came to doing the tests or the written answers, I couldn't articulate myself. I could verbally, but I couldn't write it down. And one of my teachers, my physics teacher, turned around to me and said, Phil, you've got A-star grades in your head, but when it comes down your arm, it goes down in grade. Which is an amazing analogy and a brilliant metaphor, but... Teach me how to get those thoughts onto paper. Teach me how to be able to articulate myself in such a way that I get the grades I'm worthy of getting. And secondary, I got support, but it wasn't 
individualistic. It wasn't what I needed. It was very one size fits all. And it was the continual spelling books and being given a dictionary and, set, and someone saying, well, if you can't spell the word, look it up. Well, if you can't spell the word, how can you look it up? Because I don't know how to spell it. And the continual handwriting practice and being given work and extra work and expected to do this extra work on top of everything else. And I appreciate the effort and the support people put in for me at school because when I ended up getting to college, there was no support. Like, I'm, I'm severely dyslexic and I love to read. I love being able to escape into the other worlds that people have created. And looking back, it was escapism because I felt alone and I felt that I couldn't understand what was different about me. So I, ex I explored other worlds where other people were different. And being able to escape into a land which became very real to me, just inside of my own head, was a beautiful escape. But college, college I had no support and I managed just to scrape into university. And it wasn't until my second year at university that I got told that I was dyslexic. And this kind, white-haired, old educational psychologist sat down after doing three hours of testing on me and said that I was dyslexic. That not just that I was dyslexic, but that I was severely dyslexic. And then began to explain what dyslexia was. And that, for me, that meeting, that that time when I got told, it began to make sense. And my sense of self began to change. And I began to understand who I was that little bit more. And this educational psychologist, beyond giving me the, the name of dyslexia and the understanding of, of what and who I am, they gave me a greater gift. They told me my IQ score because for a long time I thought that I was stupid, thick and dumb because I couldn't do what everybody else could do. So what was wrong with me and being stupid, even though I couldn't, even though I could give a verbal answer because I couldn't write it down and because everybody else could, then I was wrong. Somehow, some way, some part of me just didn't fit. But being told this IQ score and being told what it meant, it jarred with my idea of being stupid. I couldn't have this IQ score and be stupid. Both of them couldn't exist at the same time. So I began to change my opinion of who I am. And that was a brilliant afternoon, a tiring afternoon after three hours of testing. But... It, it was the start of me learning who I am, truly learning just who I am. Because the words I am and then whatever else you put after it shapes who you are. And over my time working in education, I've had people pleading with me to let them know what's wrong with them. Yet there's nothing wrong with anyone no one's ever been broken because you're no one alive can be fixed because no one has ever been born broken. And you have to begin to accept that each person's different. And for me, that time with the Ed Psych was that watershed moment where I began to learn who I was and accept who I was. And I ended up finishing my my PG my degree and my aim was to do my PGC because I wanted to become an English teacher. That was what I wanted to do. But during that time I ended up going to a Russell's Group University for my PGC interview and being asked the question, well, how can a dyslexic individual teach English. You can't spell, so how can you teach other people to spell? Needless to say, I ended up not getting onto my PGC course.
But what it did do, and I will always be thankful to this person in a weird sort of way, because their denial of me doing my PGC helped me change who I was even more, but helped me become the person that helped others, helped people just like me. Because I ended up working in my old secondary school and setting up my own dyslexia mentoring system. Now this was built on my experiences of the one-to-one -one support that I got at university, but was greatly expanded upon of what I felt I could have or should have had when I was at secondary school. So it began work, I began working with one student and it became clear to me that it wasn't just about figuring out how to write, that the battle wasn't about teaching these people. And I ended up working with about seven or eight students over my three and a half years there. But the battle wasn't with the words. It was the battle with their understanding of who they were as young people. And it was talking and, and listening and connecting with them and allowing them to talk and opening up and hearing similar stories and similar words to myself that I thought about myself in the past and being able to to allow them to to be vulnerable but listening truly listening and empathetically hearing what they have to say and then essentially saying me too and one of the best things that I've ever I've found was giving the young people a dyslexic role model someone to look up to someone that when their days have not been the best that they could think well this day sucked but that person got through their bad days and look at where they are now and I had one student who loved boxing and he would go to boxing multiple times per week and when he found out that Muhammad Ali was dyslexic and Muhammad Ali was his great hero well that changed that young person's life and he became so much more confident because the person he looked up to the person he believed in was just like him and unfortunately, a lot of the, the times when I initially started working with these young people, they would say that they hated being dyslexic. So they hated an aspect of who they were. And that's an awful thing for someone to think about themselves. You shouldn't hate who you are. But I couldn't understand it because it took me a long time to figure out that the parts of me that I didn't like, the parts of me that frustrated me, were actually the best parts of what made me, me. Because everybody wants to be normal, but there's no such thing as normal. We're all different and that's brilliant, really. So over the, the three and a half years that I worked in the secondary school, a lot of these students that had been predicted grades E and D left school with grades A star to C. And many of them went off to university or are now going off in their early 20s doing degrees or doing other aspects that they never thought that they could ever achieve. My first student never believed that they could go to university at all. They didn't even believe that they could even go to college. But now they are. And it's being able to listen to someone and being able to give them that belief in themselves that they could do the things that they didn't think they ever could. Now, when I was talking to these people, when I was talking to, to my students, they were helping me just as much as I was helping them because they were reaffirming what I knew or helping me to uncover what I needed to hear. And that led me on after the three and a half years to wanting to do 
I needed to know more. I needed to know more about dyslexia. So I left and I studied a master's in education and the subject was inclusion and SEN. And I loved doing what I did. And I learned a lot. And then my dissertation was on dyslexia and then self-esteem and self-confidence and how the label of dyslexia can impact upon the creation of the person. And I understand, and as I've, I've talked about before, I am are two of the most powerful words. Because you can feel shame and you can feel inadequate and you can feel unworthy. And you can feel that you're not good enough because you can't spell or that you can't write down what it is you want to write down. Yet everybody else around you can. But you actually are good enough. And that took me a long time to learn. And every day is actually a struggle. Because every day I actually have to question whether or not I am actually good enough. And some days I win the battle and other days... I don't, and but Maya Angelou turned around, said once that you have to live what you teach, and I do try to live what I teach, and it's 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 a struggle at times, but my students they keep me going because. Without them, I wouldn't have learned as much about me as I have done. Because our joint conversations of what it means to be dyslexic and the feelings behind it and and the humour and the positives and just as much as the negatives have helped me learn about myself. But it is a fight at times. And... I think that's what makes being dyslexic quite unique. And that I firmly believe over the, over the, well, nearly 10 years of being in education, that, and a lot of that time talking with dyslexic people, that dyslexics have this, and I've called it the Invictus quality, this unconquerable quality that even though at times you want to give up, even though at times we fail, and even though at times it can be too much, we get back up, we dust ourselves off, and we stand back up, and we keep going. And the easiest way, the easiest analogy I can give you is like a knight on a battlefield, with a sword and shield in hand, but countless enemies coming at him. And over time he drops his sword because he can't fight. So he hunkers down behind the shield. And yet over time the shield gets heavier and worn and he drops to his knees and he can't hold on anymore. And hopefully at times that's where someone comes in and helps. And hopefully at times that's where someone else can fight with you and for you so that you can stand up and fight yourself and you can pick up that sword and that shield and you can stand back up and keep on going because for a long time I didn't think that I had anyone else fighting with me and it wasn't until I was in a counselling session when the counsellor turned around to me and said that she didn't see me on the battlefield alone she saw me on the battlefield surrounded by a lot of other people and she described it like the the roman tactic of making the tortoise shell and that i wasn't actually alone that was how i perceived myself i had a lot of other people around me and again that's something i have to remind myself of every single day and probably the reason why i'm setting up this website and getting people to share their stories is so that the people out there in the world that if you are having a day where you don't feel 
good enough or it's been a hell of a bad dyslexic day or you feel alone that you can come on the website and listen to the stories of everybody else and you can you can get some sort of strength from that there are other people out there in this world just like you that are living lives just like you going through similar things that make you smile make you happier make you feel connected because we are actually all connected and it's about it's about realizing that and i know that every single day i have to do that and that's one of the lessons i've learned because dyslexic dyslexia has taught me quite a lot and it's taught me that i'm a gr i'm part of a group of individuals that in our past have helped change the world and there are people that are dyslexic help changing the world today and you're one of them just as I am and that life does have a way of working out as I mentioned I wanted to do my PGCE quite a few years ago and I never managed to get to do it because someone said that I could never actually become a good teacher. Well in four weeks time, as in the date that this is being recorded, I'm four weeks out from finishing my PGC. So sorry, even though someone says that you can't do something, doesn't mean that you can't do it at some point. Life has a way of working out. And you just have to, to stick by it and keep going to the point where it does start to work out. Because life does get better and if we connect, if we talk, if we let people in and let people help us, then it does have a habit of working out. And it has a habit of, of being able to become a wonderful thing. And I'm hoping that in creating this website that a lot of people can become connected and can take strength from each other and share in the humanity that each person has. So that's my story. And I guess the only thing I have left to say is that we have a lot to learn from each other. Just as I've learned a lot from my students, we'll probably be able to learn a lot from each other. So I look forward to, to hearing your stories and I look forward to, to sharing in your, your achievements and what you have have the good and the bad because another the last analogy and I've taught this to my students is that being dyslexic is kind of like being a Jedi or a wizard at Hogwarts both groups of people have wonderful gifts and strengths and ways to change the world around them they just need to be taught how to change those world, how to, sorry, they just need to be taught how to use their gifts. And that's what being dyslexic is. So thank you for listening.